following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Jennifer? It is. How are you, Ralph? I'm fine, and you are comfortably zoned with me, the Zigzag Man, in Alameda, California. You're on the air on my podcast, and you're a returning guest. Jennifer Johnson. Isn't this cool? It's awesome, yeah. Yeah. Jen Arrows. Now, you've got something before we talk and catch up a little bit. You have something going tonight. Um, that, Absolutely. And would you like to tell our RDI what it is? <laughs> well, I'm hoping they're in the San Francisco area because we have five days of a comedy fest right there at Mutiny Radio, 2781 Florida Street, down in the Mission District. Wow. And so I'll be working the door tonight, Thursday, from uh, 6 o'clock is when we get started. It's $10 a show. We've got over 35 comics coming through in the next five days. This and, is terrific. Uh, Are you one of the comics? Oh, I make everybody laugh all the time. But I'm. <laughs> <laughs> this is just, you know, Save Mutiny Radio. Help us out. This is our annual fundraiser, and we just love to put butts and seats on such a cold, blustery night, you know? Well, I'll tell you what. I recommend Mutiny Radio as opposed to FCC Free Radio. I know. That's why I didn't go there. I heard what happened with you and a few other people. Oh, it's and just... I had to mutiny <laughs> from that. It's not <laughs> what happened to me. It's what happened to them and the people who are still there. Yeah, um, I've watched it happen again and again, and I just I won't go there. Even if Mutiny ever folds, which it shouldn't, because we've got all these great things going on, um, I still would not go back to, even to be a guest over there at FCC3. I, I just, well, John has his own issues. I won't make him mine. Uh, <laughs> what else is going on in your life? How are you uh, doing? I'm doing great. I just got my cat. Back. I didn't even know I was a cat lady until he went missing, right? <laughs> so <laughs> it took a feral cat to domesticate me after all. Did they go missing bed. because the uh, ASPCA came and got him because they weren't being fed? Is, is that no, what? No, 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 no. If you look at him, he's definitely been fed. Okay. <laughs> <He's not laughs> I'm was... in the Central Valley, and I think because I'm between schools, there was probably a kid that said, Oh, mommy, no collar. Can we keep him? Oh, so, I get it. So he I likes to it. break out of his collars, so I just stopped putting a collar on him. He's shown up for four years, you know, um, no, yeah. knowing food time. Well, you're, in, you're not in San Francisco. If anybody's right. listening, you're out in a little town called Modesto, California. Um, technically, Manteca, just north of Modesto. <laughs> oh, well, that's much bigger. Well, it's uh, when it translates to lard. Which yeah. is the gateway to which? Is Manteca the gateway to Modesto, or is Modesto the gateway to Manteca? Uh, Manteca is at the crossroads between 99 and I-5 on 120. Okay. So if you go north 20 minutes, you're in Stockton. South 20 minutes, you're in Modesto. All right. And if you're going east, then you hit Yosemite within an hour and a half. If you're going west, you're hitting San Francisco within an hour and a half. Now, without traffic, how long does it take to get from Manteca slash um, uh, Modesto, Modesto slash Manteca to downtown San Francisco without traffic? I have not experienced it yet. <laughs> Well, no, but I'm, I usually I'm, allow myself a couple of hours just to make sure because there's two or three spots that tend to get pretty bound up. Okay, now these are hours of off commute that we're talking about. Am I correct? Off commute, leaving my home. If it's around three in the afternoon, it's horrible getting out of San Francisco, but it's a breeze going in. Okay. So as long as you don't hit towards six or seven o'clock at night, and then it bunches up again. What I'm trying to do is, for the audience, is illustrate, and I live in a suburb, too, um, Alameda, right across the bay from San Francisco. Right. And um, so I'm well aware from friends, associates, family that commute in Uh that traffic in the Bay Area is crazy-making nowadays. 
Oh, yeah, but, you know, it takes me from the bridge to home, 69 miles. So the only difference is going to be what time of day that I'm trying to make that pass. Right. And usually you'll have a slowdown on the Altamont. You'll have a slowdown near Livermore Pleasanton and then another one like the 586 to be interchange. And anything after that is just somebody messed up. Well, <laughs> it's crazy. I'll tell you, years ago, I was I was stationed. I'm originally from New York. Big traffic problems in New York. Even back then, everybody complained about the commute. If you were successful in life, you'd live in the suburbs, and you'd have to commute by train or whatever into New York. Still the same way. When I yeah. got out of the Air Force in, in the mid-60s, um, um, late 60s, actually, when I got out, traffic in the Bay Area was nil. The roads, you had three-lane highways. You could just drive recreationally. I haven't heard of anybody driving recreationally. Let's just go out for a ride. Nobody says that. that is you a... still pick up a Sunday driver any time of the week, though. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, um, <laughs> there are yeah, I don't see many. I, I don't even hear people talking about, let's just go for a drive. Mm -hmm. You don't hear that. And that's sad because California is a great place to drive around in. Uh, if it weren't for all the other people who thought it was a great place to drive around. Right. In. Well, you yeah. might remember back when American Graffiti came out, the big thing was about the cruise. And you'd be out there in your hot rods. You'd be picking up on the chicks or the guys. You'd well, be out with your friends doing something social. And uh, it just got so immense, they shut it down. They, you know, they had... Gunshots fired, whatever. It got crazy. Well, but we still have American Graffiti on most of the walls. If you see any of the artwork throughout Modesto, they're giving homage to that because that's where George Lucas came from. Oh, uh, where was the film actually? Was it in Modesto I, where it was filmed? Were they cruising in Modesto? God help them. Well, the story that I know is George was rather tortured in high school. He was one of those that got picked on for these crazy drawings he was making. They didn't know what Star Wars was going to be. Right. Um, and so he really is one of the characters in the movie of leaving town. He's oh. the one in the car getting out and not looking back. And so it's really funny that Modesto now has embraced this imagery and you have – uh, all kinds of uh, relating, uh, relating to the cruise. They have all kinds of things that they'll do, like the hot August night, and you know, people get all of their car clubs together with all their old cars, and they think it's a great thing with George Lucas. And it's like he was really thumbing his nose at how he was treated here and making fun of the police and making fun of the culture, and he went mm -hmm. off to make great things. So, oh, we have come hardly out. anything. Who else about came out? Who else came out of Modesto besides um, uh, George Lucas? More recently, Jeremy Renner. Oh. Uh, there's the actress on Glee who was playing one of the uh, high school coaches. Um, we've had quite a few actually, and I we also get visitors, especially at the Gallo Center for the Arts. And what's interesting is the hangouts that they like downtown. Like if you're at uh, 11th Street, we have Tricetti's, which is a great uh, world cafe, wine shop, mm -hmm. uh, Bark and Dog Grill for live music. I'm part of that scene a lot. So if they want to find out about Modesto, you can check online at uh, modestoview.com. Right. And everybody that writes for it writes for free, but they are part of the scene, and so they're giving you the real skinny. Now, I laugh about Modesto in the Central Valley, but there is nothing more pleasant than a summer night in the, in the valley. Uh, I mean, temperature cools to maybe 80 degrees, but <laughs> it's... It depends which part of the summer you've lived through. <laughs> uh, there's been, there have been a number of them. I spent a lot of time in Sacramento in my misspent youth. Uh -huh. And two uh, six or seven year periods, as a, as a matter of fact, and um, yeah, triple digit weather will hit us very, very liberally through uh, July and August. Right. And you have to pick which week you go outside. 
<laughs> outside at all. Right. Yeah, or you take the kids to the grocery store just to chill out because you right. know they're the most. You put them in the in the coolers and and what have you. <laughs> all right. Hey, it's nice catching up with you. You are yeah. uh, you've been gone for a long time from these airways of comfortably zoned. It's and been a while, Ralph, but uh, you know, I've got my new advertisement out there with me in that bodice, and you're the one that invited me on because I was talking about something. Oh, what was it? Chastity belts. Uh, when was this? This was years ago in my car. Yeah, years ago at, at that other place we won't go to again, but that's oh. how we met. Uh, I've met a lot of women talking about chastity belts, so I, now that you uh, bring it to mind, you are the, one of the most special women that I've met talking about chastity belts. Yeah. And I don't even Thank bring the subject up very often, except with special people. Thank you. Well, can I give you one last idea that I've changed chastity belts into? <laughs> so my key is not going to work anymore? Well, you know, why do you well, think it, so it didn't work any? It didn't work any less. You're supposed to say. Why do you think there's so many Smiths on the planet? It's the guy who made the keys. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, no. But I've come up with a new invention in honor of Trump being president. What is that, young comedian? <laughs> I call them BTUs or bear trap undies because they're too oh. hot to handle. You're gonna lose something. <laughs> All right. Um, it is, you know, an old guy like me getting up early. The midday is early for an old old person. And getting up is great for an old person. Go for it. <laughs> well, you got that right. <laughs> you got that right. I used to laugh and I said, every day above ground. <laughs> well, fuck yeah. <laughs> no, no question about it. <laughs> Uh, well, unless the uh, the missiles start flying, then down below ground. Oh be. yeah, we got a lot of stuff. <laughs> I I did get up earlier. Um, I get up to just to see what it's like on the news, and then if I don't like it, I go back to bed. But the Russians are, are now um, bragging about some new missile thing that they can say can wipe us out. There's no way to stop them. Blah blah blah. What got on? Un- what got under their hides? Because Trump answers, oh, we'll just spend more money on on um, missiles and stuff. We'll catch up to them in no time. Don't worry about it. Well, where's this money going to come from? And, and where are you going to use them and why? And why? And why is either side going to use them? But why take away more money from schools and the arts and what have you? Well, um, and anything that helps us thrive as society, it's like they really want us to be dumb and they want us to be compliant and they want us to be so abused we can't look up. And unfortunately for him, the best thing about the Trump presidency I've seen is the resistance and that people are changing the narrative every day. So they've gotten involved and the students are involved and I don't see it going his way very long. I was very impressed with the students in Florida after the oh, yeah. the 18th um, shooting. Absolutely. In, 18th shooting in 45 days or whatever it was. Um, enough is enough. Enough is enough, indeed. But what little strides, what are they going to do? Take away, make it 18 instead of, make it 21 instead of 18? Why don't they take away the magazines? And, yeah. All you'd have the to do. To, yeah, the ability to kill masses of people unchecked. And that's why they were not wanting them modifying the semi automatic weapons. And who Who is behind this? I don't, I can't believe that the NRA is so sinister to keep magazines in business. Are they making profits from those magazines? Is, that, is it big bucks to sell them or buy them? I think the most poignant statement one of the students had made was, for the money you have made, each person who has died from a bullet has earned you so much money. So, Oh, okay. Yeah, they broke it down. Any of the politicians taking money from the NRA, you're putting the value of that bullet and that money in your pocket and taking it away from the value of the human that gets killed by it. And so for every shooting that happens, you've devalued life by that much. 
And there's no accountability. That's the problem. I think this was solved in the Supreme Court a while back or determined Uh by the Supreme Court that the gun manufacturers and the folks that sell them, the the stores and what have you, absolutely no liability. And and who's going to determine? Now they're going to say, well, they're going to have stricter laws on on mental illness, this, that, and the other thing. He's that, the one that retracted that whole thing about mentally ill people having access to guns in the first place. And it was just anything with Obama's name on it that he wanted to obliterate, thinking he's a hero without looking at the consequences ever. Well, that one gets me. And I think when he thought about it, it even got him because he's modified his stance a little bit on um, – Gun toters being uh, under eighteen. I I think he's um, well because he's probably afraid of what Baron might do. (laughs) 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 That's true. Mental illness runs in the family. Uh, you know, Baron may be be a hero someday if you stop to think about it. He he uh, just might, and it just depends on how good of an education he gets about the world he's in. Right, and um, but it it depends on whether or not he's aware of what's going on around him. Some kids will never get it because all they think about is I'm going to be a trust fund baby, and it re- really doesn't matter. But some kids, you know, have to see that. And maybe he'll be one of those. That that could be history. Hurry up. Take, <laughs> hurry up, kids. <laughs> right. Well, I can't wait to syndicate my radio show, whether it's through Comfortably Zoned or another station, because, you know, the trust fund that I have is my dad died and the, the house was paid off, but we've got repairs to do. And I need the momentum behind that that I can sustain. The La- ladies and gentlemen, this is Jennifer Johnson. <laughs> Queen for the day. <laughs> Queen of Arts at Yahoo? Uh, well. Yes. Uh, well, we'll do something. You are charming, and you'd be a wonderful hostess on one of the shows on Thank Comfortably you, Zoned. Um, and we'll talk about that at length. You were nice I to me. You, like you got it was very cathartic talking to you. Just we, we got to talk about the situation the way it is. Could our grandparents ever have imagined something like like the way things have turned out? And I don't mean the gun shooting. I mean the designated hitter in, in the American League. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the gun shooting, they would have a hard time with that too. Uh, of yeah. course. No, but to be serious, who could have imagined a world? Um, I'm a little older than you, naturally. Uh, but, but even in your time, when you grew up, you couldn't have imagined things have going what I called radically downhill. Right. Well, because I have a benchmark of when it was actually better than now. But I can see how... We can use some of the current tools to get us out of this. We just was it right before Reagan? Was it right before Reagan screwed up yes. the unions? I what, would what? definitely agree with that because uh, now on my family side, my my grandpa was in the carpenters union, so I understood what that was about. And when there wasn't work, you had people that were there to help feed you, and they belonged to social organizations like the Moose Lodge or the Eagles, and they looked after each other. That part of the culture slid away. When you don't have people bringing in the younger crowd, basically, to fill in those footsteps and and meet those goals socially that bring us all together and look after each other. With Reagan, when he was shot, I will tell you what happened. My classroom, it was a fourth and fifth grade class. I'm not trying to age anybody here. But we cheered. It was a collective here when we got the news that he was shot and my teacher was devastated and he had to explain to us the weight of this happening to our president but for us to have reached that conclusion so quickly how, how old were you how old were you at that time jennifer uh fourth fifth grade i my yeah. god kids class i uh, i was a preteen. wow 
And so the kids that responded that way, it was kind of like we must have felt the tension of having him in office and what it was doing to the country already. Right. Well, there, you know, arguably we've had worse, I think, arguably. Uh, Although he begat it all. He begat the Bushes. Um, it, Yeah. It was was him. Can I tell you what it was in the Me Too movement that – that started it all. Talk to me. You ready for this? I I have it broken down. In uh, in the past, both Tony Bennett, one of my heroes when I was a kid for a number of reasons, my mother went to his brother as a hairdresser, Tony Benito, uh, Benedino or whatever. His brother Uh was my mother's hairdresser. So, okay. And I thought he was just absolutely terrific, as right. good as anybody. Not as good as Frank, blah, 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 blah. The, but this, that, and the other thing. He was they great. held their own. They, oh, he held his own. And still does. He's 80-plus years old. Well, wow. he and Robin Williams, another one of my comic heroes. I did comedy. I opened for him. I sat and mm-hmm. talked to him before going on. Anyway... He, they both knowingly spread genital herpes and paid big bucks in settlement back in, wow. in the 70s, 80s, whatever it was. Could have been the, even into the 90s. Big bucks to women. Wow. Their careers soared as, uh, uh, right after that, Doubtfire, wow. Mrs. Doubtfire, whatever, they yeah. knowingly, they paid literally millions, it bucks out in the millions, two separate lawsuits. They weren't spreading them or trading them with each other. But um, that happened, and the public, and it was in all the papers. I'm not making this up. Right. <laughs> you, know, you could see it on the Internet. Public totally ignored both cases. Yeah, because they were heroes. They were heroes. So what – and what they did uh, is arguably worse than a little groping here, a few little, little sexual innuendos it there. somebody's life. Yeah. yeah which are life. bad. Which are bad. All those things that people are coming forward to uh, to say nothing – and it's not just the entertainment industry. Um, the church and, and all that, that, that stuff's been – that's their that's what they do that's a common topic on your show yes yeah well that's how they roll oh you listen to my show do you but of course oh nice because i know (laughs) i (laughs) i have mentioned it once or twice that it's funny (laughs) whatever you believe in why don't you just leave the kids out of the out of the equation (laughs) <laughs> that uh, don't bring them where that you have to watch them 24 hours. You don't want a nanny cam in your place of worship. But yeah. that notwithstanding, um, what's, what's happening now is, is bad, but it was much worse then and people ignored it. So it gave permission for the, quote, little things. Well, it's not as bad as blah, blah, blah. Right. So, and I think that uh, that had a long term because our entertainment, our sports heroes, uh, um, our whatever it is, movie, movie actors. I mean, we live vicariously through these people. Yeah, and you don't want them to stop, and you don't want them to fall from grace. Exactly, and yet there, yet there are certain people. There were, for a while there, they were having people coming out uh, that would surprise her. Mr. Green Jeans or whoever it was, uh, some very, very um, atypical person that you would expect. Uh, I don't think it was Mr. Green Jeans, but you know what I'm saying. That every day you get someone else and you go, oh, my God, Dustin Hoffman, oh, this, you know, you don't want that. You know, you don't want it. But you start getting an overload that a lot of it was because the suppression was so effective for so long. <coughs> so, right, um, right. Victim no, blaming was cultural. 
And so this was one of those things that did affect my life growing up, but it was like there were other people I didn't want it to affect by bringing it up. So right. I'm, until the perpetrator died and I could have free conversations at a much older age, um, it was really incredible to me. The people that came out later to be supportive, like, oh, I thought something was going on, but they were all silent. There was a lot of complicity in that. It was like the, the kid that did the shooting, the same thing. People go, well, he was strange. You know, he would tie well, the cats together. Him. It's uh, not a surprise to the people who heard it was him. And that was the thing is once you can freely speak on these things, it's amazing how many people kept silent for their various reasons. Oh, it's not my beer. I'm not going to get involved. That's a family issue or whatever the issues are that they can excuse. There's no more excuses, and that's what's changed right now. And I think having Trump as that pivotal figure that has removed any bar for achievement in his office, uh, it's motivated people to really evaluate what they value and how they want to uphold those values. Very, very well said. You'll be a a comedian-slash-political commentator (laughs) on Comfortably Zoned. I would appreciate it. (laughs) <laughs> yes, join me for Friends with Jennifer. Uh, ah, you take the name. <laughs> with, that's very clever. You're a wordsmith, too. So I have more slashes going. We got wordsmith, slash, comedian, slash. Yeah, well, you know what I did with my divorce? Uh, I went slash. With, instead of hyphen <laughs> my name, I call it a minus. <laughs> ah, right. Well, you know what they say, one less spell to answer. Certainly somebody else's problem. I'm sure we all are somebody else's problem on some level. Um, well, as long Sally, as are you listening? Uh, <laughs> as long as I reach my goal of lifetime notoriety status, I'm on target. Absolutely. Stay that way, young lady. Be healthy. And uh, until that time. Always a pleasure, Ralph. Thanks for having me. All right. Listen, everybody out there listening, if you enjoy this offering, any of our offerings, please box up some lightly used children's books. Take them to the Head Start program where you live. Kids need to read. They need to get their noses out of the devices and the games and what have you. They need to develop an education. Uh, not an education, but they do need to develop a um, an imagination yeah. and a passion, and they need to become school ready. And the kids that are in Head Start that would be benefiting from it could use a little help right now just to get to the point where they can keep up and don't fall behind And the best way to do that is a little math, a little science, and a little social interaction, as well as reading before going to going to kindergarten. Yeah. Gotta change the next generation because this generation has messed it up. And um We have new leaders in our midst. You'll watch. It's happening. I know, I know. But uh, speed it all up for me, if you would, out there, society. (laughs) You messed it up quick enough. Now fix it. All right, everybody. The mistakes so someone else can take care of it. All right, we gotta gotta look uh, to Donald Jr. What do they call? What's his name? Donald Jr. No, not Donald Jr. The 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 youngest. The youngest. We. Oh, Baron. Because Baron. Good luck, Baron. Whatever you decide to do, do, do it the best you can. Yeah. Be the best Baron you can be. That's all I Absolutely. ask. Whatever. I'm not telling you what to do. Be the best Baron. Go get him, young guy. Adios, everybody. <laughs> Bye, Jennifer. <laughs> See you soon. Thank you, Ralph. Bye. Bye.